Hello, everyone. Um, wherever you are, uh, good morning, afternoon, good evening. Um, I am saying hi to Marciona. Um, I am, uh, my name is Tiajini. And um, I am uh, the vice president of the Marciona. At the and um, um, I am going to talk about the um, video of the landscape. So, um, yes, so, you know, the goal you ask is to ask what the video of the landscape is about. And it is, um, you know, the fact that it, the idea of the DLT landscape was um, conceived. Uh, at, the, um, at the High Pleasure Global Forum uh, last year. It was actually the last in-person event I attended um, in uh, 2020. And um, so we were talking about um, the fact that, you know, the whole DLT space uh, was growing in complexity in the you know, last um, few years. Um, there was we, we, we have seen a increasing activity and interest in areas that were outside of that uh, you know core distributed uh, ledger layer that now I guess we all know and you know it sort of created a confusion over you know where specific projects and uh, company offerings uh, as well as you know specific network implementations uh, fit uh, into the overall system uh, well the ecosystem so we thought that you know creating a sort of um, business stack that um, had a technology foundation uh, would be really useful not uh, you know to mitigate that confusion in the market, but also, you know, to, yeah, again, provide a better understanding of the, you know, different, um, different participants of the ecosystem, their specific offerings, but, you know, also just to create a common language in the DLT community and, uh, you know, uh, provide even a strategic tool Right, that you could use uh, for better positioning for your specific uh, offering. Um, also, you know, look for partnerships uh, as well as you know, sort of tweak your go-to-market strategy. So, in terms of so what we came up with, and uh, you know, this is sort of the framework for for the DLT landscape, and uh, this is the the initial version of it. And, you know, as you'll see, you know, we go from that, you know, basic compute infrastructure, you know, up to, uh, up to the distributed ledgers, which, you know, we uh, sort of differentiate between permission, permissionless and, uh, and hybrid uh, ledgers. But also, you know, we thought that, you know, uh, distributed ledger technology doesn't really stand on its own. So, um, we thought that you know many of the the use cases sort of required a combo of different technologies coming together and then provide that desired outcome. So we sort of created that uh, another layer that you know we would call technology intersections. And um, the keynotes, I think um, David Tree from Accenture mentioned this combinat uh, combinatorial uh, technology, and I think that's what this layer reflects actually how the core blockchain technology sort of uh, works together, you know, with other existing emerging technologies, um, you know, uh, could be AI, IoT, cybersecurity, and so on. And then, again, uh, you know, when we, we think about that we are living a, um, in a multi-ledger world, it started with the Bitcoin blockchain over a decade ago, but then all sorts of uh, new protocols uh, came to existence because, you know, while well, trying to sort of address the flaws of the original, sort of, if we can call it the original blockchain, but, you know, also uh, catering to enterprise requirements and solving some of the 
some of the problems, right, that arise or just simp uh, simply new requirements. So interoperability will be key and we, I think uh, that obviously we, we, that's, uh, that's reflected uh, in the landscape. Right now it's still, you know, composed by very fragmented um, um, initiatives, but, uh, you know, we'll see how that evolves. It's, I guess it's still a little bit early, early days, but, you know, that's, again, it's, it's, it's a very key, a uh, very important area, right? And then obviously smart contracts and digital tokens, uh, they, they play a key role in this space. You know, smart contracts, they have um, become known to the world as, you know, those uh, that self-enforcing uh, uh, business logic that uh, is on sort of top on that uh, co uh, core distributed ledger uh, that can sort of automate, um, uh, you know, the rules of engagement and, you know, different uh, business processes where, you know, uh, different parties coming together. And again, digital tokens as well. <laughs> it's not, um, you, especially lately with NFTs and everything, it's been, uh, th there has been a lot of noise around that, but you know, with it, it, it is definitely a key part of, of, uh, of this market together with digital wallets and so on. And then we, we cannot forget uh, about uh, business tooling and integrations. At the end of the day, uh, this technology is very complex, right? It's, it's not straightforward to use, uh, obviously not for the end user, but not perhaps not even for, for the developer, right? So we, then we need those tools that make that easy. Right, so you you know you can build on that you know sort of blockchain infrastructure and uh, build focus on your application uh, and uh, build those you know multi-party systems and, and and so on. So that's where these uh, this business tooling and integrations uh, layer come uh, um, comes into the picture. And you know we sort of uh, there there are uh, again different categories. Uh, around, you know, different tools that, you know, help the developer itself. Also, you know, some analytics monitoring tools as well as very specific, uh, you know, platforms that may have been already existing, but now they have this uh, sort of uh, uh, distributed or decentralized capability underneath. And then obviously uh, the applications on top, there have been uh, many uh, industry uh, industry specific implementations, you know, uh, trade lands, and you know, many in, in different industries, um, creating specific business networks, um, sort of uh, addressing a very specific industry uh, a problem, and uh, as well as you know, decentralized marketplaces could be, you know, to trade you know, all sorts of assets. It could be, you know, data or even, you know, any in-game collectibles or, or, or so on. So those would be uh, on that uh, on that level. And then, uh, and then you will see on the framework uh, that uh, on, on the two sides, the platform um, category or layer, as well as the, the services one. Obviously, uh, you know, IT, uh, skills gaps as well as you know the lack of resources um, that organizations may have you you would need to, to you know some help with that and uh, there are specific companies that are vendors that or service providers that uh, focus on you know may, making uh, your life easier right so providing all that knowledge that you don't have uh, or just basically providing some, you know, quicker time to market for you. So taking, taking away all that pain that come, comes with, you know, operations and management, setting up uh, blockchain networks or, you know, even, you know, building applications. So just providing all that, you know, infrastructure and knowledge and so on. So, so they can help you with that. So um, this is the framework. This is where it all started. And uh, now I, I guess we should be uh, talking about the outcome, right? So what we wanted to do 
you know, based on this framework is uh, to create a sort of a living segmentation of, of, of this market that it's, you know, still evolving. It's again, it's, we, we see it as a business stack with the technology foundation. And so, so we, we found this, um, this uh, application, this landscape app that was created by the CNCF. Uh, you know, a project under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation. And uh, so uh, basically, it's, we, we used that open source code and we did uh, build a open source initiative uh, that is based on that uh, same open source code. And it's sort of interactive. At the end of the day, it's, we created it as a company, BTP, but uh, and we are going to curate it or continue to create it and we'll be hosting it, but it is independent of the company, right? So obviously, you know, our competitors are on the landscape. It's just, we created it for the community, you know, to, to, to benefit from, contribute to, and so on. So, you know, before showing the actual landscape, uh, you know, we, we did, so we launched it in April, but on the 22nd of April, it uh, had a press release. Um, it had it, it has a, it has a blog post as well. It explains you know the whole background of the what what what, what I already explained to you the background of the landscape. You know what the different layers mean and what the purpose of it is. And uh, you know it's home. Uh, it's uh, um, the Altis uh, Landscape Org. It has its own uh, QR code. It's sort of we sort of created a persona around it. It has its own uh, Twitter account. She tweets in first person and so on. But um, okay, well, yeah, just uh, okay. Sorry, I wanna show you, and then we can uh, talk a little bit about the the dynamics, right? So this is how it looks like right now. I think, to be honest, I think this is it's pretty awesome. The application has its limitations, but uh, we, we did create, as you can see, uh, we did create the same, you know, uh, structure as, as shown on the framework, going from the infrastructure, you know, uh, goes up to different levels and then end with the applications, with the platforms and uh, the services uh, on the side. You can see uh, those uh, little squares. Those are, um, you can call them like project or company cards. Um, so if you click on them, and then obviously at, as uh, we are at uh, Hyperledger Global Forum, let's check a uh, Hyperledger project. All right. So distributed ledgers, Hyperledger Bezu, we love Hyperledger Bezu, is uh, in the... Uh, in that um, distributed ledger layer among uh, the uh, hybrid initiatives. And as you can see, so if you click click on that specific card, uh, you will see some basic data around you know, the project or if it's a commercial offering, obviously uh, around that offering and the company and so on. So um, one thing to uh, highlight is that to be able to, uh, be part of the landscape. You need to have a account on Crunchbase because you know that this base information is pulled from Crunchbase and all that information that is uh, displayed there. As well as if you, obviously if you are an open source uh, a project, then uh, also your uh, GitHub repo. So we are, you know. All that information is uh, in the landscape, and then it's then all the data it's uh, it's pulled right there. So you can see, you know, Hyperledger Bezu. Uh, it has you know website repo, the account of Hyperledger, some data, you know, some uh, uh, data around developer activity and so on, and even you know the latest tweets of Hyperledger. Obviously, if uh, you know, if you are an organization like Hyperledger that has different initiatives or if you're a company with different offerings that you might be, you know, in different categories, then, you know, what, uh, you know, we, we are trying to do is, um, you know, is to pull the, some specific information on that uh, specific offering or project, right? But obviously we are using the 
Crunchbase account is, is just for an organization, but that we are trying to pull in some uh, data from, from your specific project. So, okay, that's it. If uh, you can also see that, um, you know, you might see some of the, some of the logos uh, are not the actual logos, but there are some placeholder logos, which are, you know, those cars that are displaying uh, the DLT landscape logo. That's, uh, there, there is an explanation for that. Uh, it's because, so this application requires that we have, uh, a logo of the specific organization or offering in SVG format. So if we don't get the SVG format, we cannot display it. We are so sorry, but that, that, that's how it is. So for example, if for example, we look at cybersecurity, uh, let's click on this one. Oh, Alter. So Alter is, yeah, it's a, it's a uh, uh, Impio Security startup. They are using uh, distributed ledger technology. And, uh, but yeah, again, you can see all the data about the company, their tweets, and we, 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 we had all that information, but we didn't get their, their, their logo. So again, uh, we, if, if, if you wanna, if you want to make any correction, uh, basically, if you, you see yourself on the landscape, and, uh, you know, you see any mistakes, or, you know, you wanna, you think that you, might be in another category or you need to be in more categories. So you all you need to do is uh, pull, uh, is submit a pull request, right, uh, through GitHub. So you can do that. Again, with the same thing with the logos. If you see your car there, but you don't have a logo, if you submit your SVG, the genuine SVG format logo, you know, uh, we can approve that and it will be displayed. So th th this is what you need to do. So essentially what we created, it was, you know, the whole framework, you know, with a, with a good list of projects and companies uh, with their offerings on that. It's not an exhaustive list. So there are so many initiatives uh, in the DLT space, as you can see. As you can see, the market right now is pretty fragmented. It's very complex. So, you know, if you don't, if you don't see yourself here, please um, let us know. Well, uh, just submit a pull request or you can reach out to us as well directly. We can make that happen. And again, if you see uh, you want to make a correction, a suggestion, yeah, again. So we, we want this to be, you know, uh, I mean, it, 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 something really useful for the community, created by the community. So it's now, let's say, it's, uh, it is in the wild, right? So please, I invite all of you to, contrib uh, to contribute to it. And uh, we are really excited about this. And we really hope that this is useful. Again, uh, as mentioned before, you can use it as a strategic tool. It helps you, you know, see where you where you are in the landscape, how you can, you know, better position yourself, uh, who your competitors are, maybe that will help you improve your messaging. Also, you know, you can see, you know, who are those, you know, different initiatives or well, projects or companies that you should be partnering with and, and uh, you know, and just, uh, you know, uh, take, take that next step and tweak, tweak your go-to-market strategy. So, um, I guess that's it for me. So I, I, yeah, I'm going to take a look at if there are, you know, any questions. Uh, I'm very happy to, you know, answer all those. All right. No questions. There's a chat. Okay, um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Troin. <laughs> um, again, you know, if you, you have any questions about the DLT landscape, uh, you know, let us know. Um, we are still the sponsors of, uh, of this event and we have a virtual booth and just, you know, stop by and let's have a chat and, uh, you know, let us know what you think and, um, and again, uh, you can just yeah, reach out to us. Um, we are more than happy to help. And again, if you don't see, if you are active in the DLT landscape, 
uh, well, sorry, in the DLT space and you don't see yourself on the landscape, uh, please let us know or just, you know, submit a pull request. Uh, let us know or let us know and uh, we can do that for you. And, uh, you know, again, hopefully this is a, a useful tool for, for the community. There are actually a couple of questions in the Q&A tab. Uh, sorry, because uh, now I can see it because, yeah, I was clicking it. Where do we do pull requests? Yes. So as uh, if you uh, give me a sec. Uh, Git, so you can see, yeah, yeah. It's Zamel uh, you can please open a pull request, right? So you can click there or just go, go to GitHub, right? It's GitHub DLT landscape. So you can, you can create your pull request there. Can you tell us about your work with the GSMI? Well, uh, <laughs> thank you for that question. Um, that's uh, something new. So we have just uh, launched that sort of technical working group. Uh, we had our first meeting this week. And uh, actually it's, you know, it's a really good question because we have, you know, we have uh, started to talk about if, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, we could collaborate on if, uh, you know, uh, we could find a way to, you know, bring these two sort of initiatives together and how we could extend this landscape uh, and reflect the work of the G GSMI. So that's something that we are working on. Excellent question. Any, yeah, any other questions? Can you tell us? Uh... Exp yes. <laughs> yeah, so I guess, so for now, the landscape, it's sort of, it's, as you can see, is very uh, vendor focused. It, and it's not only commercial companies, but also those projects that are either underpinning or, ha or have an open source offering. Uh, but then, yeah, so what we could add, and I think we will start to think about is those uh, adding those or somehow those organization, you know, we don't want to overwhelm the landscape, but I think we, we will need to perhaps add those organizations that are a little bit on the sidelines, but very influential, right? They might not be a, te uh, a technical offering, but, you know, they are influencing the market. So I think that's something where, yeah, we could, uh, we could uh, imp improve the, the landscape. And again, you know, if, uh, you, yeah, please suggest any ideas. Just take a look, take take your time, take a look at the landscape, and just let us know what you, you know what you think. Any suggestions? And and the idea is to you know make it grow. This is a sort of our first version, and we, we want to make this really useful for the community. So, thanks so much. Could you add tech capital funds and investors? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> so there's a question around capital funds and investors. And then again, I guess, yeah, you're right. So those are, those would be uh, included in that category that are not like specifically offering a, spe um, uh, a technical offering, but then we should be, yeah, those should be reflected on the landscape. I do agree. So we will work on that. Yeah, definitely. So th thanks for that suggestion. Uh, any more questions? How did we? Um, so how did, uh, how did we come up with permissionless uh, blockchains? I mean, you know, <laughs> So I, <laughs> I don't know if it's, uh, this is an ironic question or not. I guess, you know, a little bit, if you look at how the cloud market has evolved and, you know, initially we had, you know, AWS and uh, the whole idea around uh, public cloud and then, you know, organizations uh, looking at all the security aspects and privacy and so on, and they were not that comfortable with public clouds and then, you know, uh, we have seen the emergence of uh, private offerings. I think 
And then obviously the market has evolved and now it's hybrid and, you know, pointing to more usage of public cloud and so on. I guess uh, something, perhaps something uh, similar is happening in the blockchain space. Uh, the initial idea was like fully uh, public. And then, you know, obviously uh, enterprises saw the opportunity and, and the potential of the technology. And, you know, there are uh, specific enterprise requirements that those, you know, public uh, blockchains uh, couldn't comply with or at first instance and then you know uh, all those offerings uh, uh, have emerged and then we'll see where the market goes but we, we, we I, I guess I, I just see a very very similar trend to, to the cloud market like going to hybrid and then who, who knows but uh, yeah <laughs> uh, any other questions thank you Troy and thanks everyone for the questions so far, and again, uh, I'm happy if you you know if you don't if you're shy or you, you don't ask your question here, uh, I'll be here today. Well, tomorrow and after tomorrow, so uh, I, I'm happy to uh, answer any additional questions, um, not offline, online, but you know outside of the session. Okay, I'll, I'll wait just a few seconds if there are any more questions. Okay. All right. Well, I think we are, we are, yeah, we are about to finish the session anyway. So uh, thank you so much for those who attended and I hope this was useful and we are really excited about this uh, initiative and uh, you know, just, yeah, again, let us know what you think. And um, again, I, I, I really hope that uh, this is useful for the community. And I'm available for questions out of, uh, outside of the session. So thank you so much. Uh, have a great uh, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. And uh, um, hope to talk soon. Thank you so much. <laughs>